that, uh, wow, all kinds of technical difficulties already to begin with. Ooh. <laughs> wow, it's very strange uh, when you are not very good with the technical stuff, how uh, if you forget to mute one uh, device, then the other, you get in this big crazy loop. And uh, in a way, you feel like you are time traveling. But welcome to Mimi Live. So we are over the hump of the technical uh, difficulties. Welcome back if you are joining us from uh, last week. We had a very, very nice date with uh, Monsieur Tony Napo. Uh, easily maybe uh, the nicest lips in uh, the world of Canadian entertainment. This I could tell just from looking at them. This was my professional assessment. So, um, what to tell you? Tony, at the very end of our date, was very um, uh, indulgent of me because uh, I was, of course, very nervous to go on a date with actors. If you have ever seen my live show, we never, never choose other performers. In the live show, only regular people normal people, not these crazy actors. So Tony, big departure, really nice time with him. And then uh, at the end, we, um, we made this little game together uh, that he would set me up with a different actor, someone a tiny bit more famous than him. And we see uh, over these weeks where, where we are all stuck inside of our, our own places, just how far up the ladder of fame will I maybe be able to climb? We don't know. It's a big um, uh, experiment. So uh, what else? Oh, yes. Uh, I have a terrible memory, but uh, some things for you to know. Uh, I have some more thank yous uh, that I need to do for this week. So. First and foremost, I want to say a, a great big merci to our friends at the National Arts Center of Canada, that is in Ottawa. Uh, we would not be here this week if they did not um, indulge us uh, by giving a little bit of a boost financially to do the very first one. Now, they are no longer supporting us, not with cash but with their spirits, I'm sure they are. Uh, and so I am one for continuing gratitude. So because we are here, because of them, we say thank you to them and the beautiful Jillian Kylie who is running the English side. Um, ah, I'm looking at my um, little notebook. I did an upgrade from last week. Coil last week, this week, fuck that. Um, this is a very important uh, merci to a very good dear friend of mine, Monsieur Christian Malcolm. We have been friends since we were 12 years old and uh, anything to do with the computer, he is my coach. So all of the, the crap that happened at the beginning, I will get a phone call about it tomorrow and he will give me some coaching because uh, that, was, that was very messy. This is how you know it is live. We did not rehearse it. Um, the lucky thing right now for me technically is that uh, I'm not crying. That's a very big step in maturity for me. So, merci mon ami, je vous aime. Um, oh yes, of course. And a great big merci to all of you that were watching last week. So a reminder, uh, maybe you are watching for the first time or you forgot or um, anyway. Uh, during my little date this evening, I will... Uh, invite you, of course, to make your live comments and to talk to each other, but um, I will not respond to you in real time. That's a bit different from regular live stuff, but only because I want to give my uh, complete focus to my date, who I will talk about in a second, okay? So, um, but I will check your comments afterwards. Uh, ah, yes, so <laughs> in looking from last week at the comments, of course, one question always, what's with the nose? It's just part of who I am. We don't really talk about it, okay? That's the deal. Clowns are clowns, all kinds of different clowns. I'm a bit sassy. That's all you need to know. Sassy clown. Um, 
another uh, thing I noticed on the comments. Lot of talk about this beautiful painting behind me and how sometimes if I'm in the right position, I look like someone said a really cute unicorn. You are correct. I'm a bit of a unicorn. Uh, but this beautiful painting done by a very, very good friend of mine. Her name is Jennifer Wigmore. Okay, and uh, she does not only do dogs in the party hats, but that's one of her big sellers. So I was very lucky to get my hands on one of these. She does commissions. She is a genius. Uh, she has a website, jenniferwigmore.com. Now you will see, this is more proof. I made this for you all to find the website, but I am guessing for you, it is backwards. Maybe, I don't know. It is backwards for me because I don't know how to switch uh, my camera. So Jennifer with two N's, last name Wigmore. How you remember it? Jennifer and what should ladies that are tired of doing their hair do? Wigmore, jenniferwigmore.com. You go there, you check out her artwork. You see if you can buy one, it would bring joy to you. Oh my God, my foot is falling asleep in the way I am sitting, okay. Um, oh. Okay, one thing before we begin with the date. Um, probably like a lot of you, uh, I am reading too much stuff on the internet. This week, I read a little uh, article and it was about the theater. Now, normally, as I've mentioned to you, I do my, uh, my blind dating, would be live in the theater. It's quite different. This is casual, Mimi, at, look, I'm showing my strap. That's how casual it is. Um, so, uh, but in this article, it was talking about uh, all of my friends, my colleagues, uh, how we are sad that we are not live in the theater. And um, maybe some of you who are watching right now, you'll also love the live theater. Uh, it was mentioning in the very first paragraph, the things that we are all missing if we come from this world, or if you like to go see live music, concerts, dance, whatever, anything live like this. We are missing, we are feeling the emptiness of no, um, not being in the same room together, in the dark, where we can feel each other's movements, we can uh, gasp at the same time, we get taken up in the story, and the scientists know that when we do this, that our breathing will synchronize, that our hearts will actually, this for real, our hearts will synchronize. Um, our mirror neurons inside of our brains will fire while we are looking at the story unfolding. So we are very sad and we have a lot of grief in our hearts because we are missing this feeling. But uh, this is what I want to suggest to you, that uh, your imagination, votre imagination is a very, very, very powerful thing. We hear stories about people that are told you will never walk and then they do. So before I invite my date in, I want to invite you to breathe with me and know on your side where you are looking, I'm not able to see it, but you can maybe see in this moment, how many people are watching live and that in, together we we synchronize and as we synchronize somewhere in the universe, the magic, the energy, because we are all putting our attention and we are breathing together that on some level, although we can't feel immediately the body next to us in the world of magic, we are together, we are connected. This is the important thing and it is why we try this on the internet. So. Oh my God, enough of this. Let's get my fucking date going. Because why? It is a guy that I'm so excited for. Monsieur, 
Monsieur Colin Mockery, maybe you've heard of him. I don't know. If you haven't, I don't know where you have been. So I will see if he is with us. Monsieur Mockery, are you there? I am here. <gasps> oh my God, it's you. I will ask you to start your video. Okay. It's very exciting. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh! Hello. Oh! Voila, there you are! So lovely to uh, meet you. Oh my goodness. Okay. Maybe I am realizing in this moment, if I could share very personally with you. All right. That maybe one of the reasons in my live performance I don't pick actors is because I get a bit starstruck. Oh. Because you are famous. Do you know it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, you know what? Um, oh. You'll be over that so quickly. Really? I mean, look at this. I'm looking at it. I mean, it's pretty cute, I admit. But that's it. Just a cute guy. Okay, I don't know. I'm going to, okay, my goal for the evening actually is to get to the bottom of you. Dear, all right. Monsieur. Well, <laughs> interesting with social distancing, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, yeah, yeah, why not? So, I mean, uh, is it fair to say, oh, I will drink a little bit while we are together. Do you have a cup? I will drink also. Oh, cheers, yes. together. Voila. Hmm. Okay, so. Here we are, we're on a blind date. We'll get mm -hmm. to know each other. I have to sort of um, divest myself of um, my assumptions about you. Yes. Because um, when I think to myself, Colin Mockery, I think, wow, the, the nicest man in Canada. Is it, tr is it true? Oh, am I, are you supposed to answer that? Um, yeah, that was, that was actually, that was rhetorical a little bit in my tone. Yeah. Uh, but actually, I really want to know, because my impression is you are the kindest man in the show business. I, um, I would not, I would say I strive to be that. I mean, ah. I really don't have anything to be a dick about. So, um, you know, I'm, I love what I do. I'm surrounded by great people. I have a great family. So I have no reason not to be. And I was very fortunate when I was starting. I had a lot of people help me and um, inspire me and help me along. And I, I believe in putting that forward. But I know many people much kinder and consistently kinder. What? Okay. Three. I know three. Yeah, that's it. I was going to say. This must be a very, very, very short lift. Now, uh, you mentioned your family. Yes. You are married. I am. I know that's usually a obstacle in dating. Not for me. Good for you. And for you, you have your wife's, your beautiful wife's permission to be um, spending a little bit of time with a clown. She is thrilled. Um, you know, because of the uh, current world situation we've been spending a lot of time together which has been wow. great yeah but there are you know there is uh you need a little time you know just to sort of do whatever you want to do separately without that other person there so completely completely otherwise if you are not careful now we are on week number six i believe mm -hmm. um at some point it's going to get really ugly <laughs> There's no way around it. There is no way around it. No, there isn't. There, there isn't. You never see a movie where people are in an enclosed space for a long time and it end well. Oh, no, Someone's no, 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 no. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So so we are maybe we are creeping up. Uh, we are getting past to uh, like the introduction of the zombie movie. We have had a very long, slow build up. Mm -hmm. Shit is going to get crazy uh, anytime now probably inside the walls of your own apartment. Like for me, uh, a lot of my very good friends, just in the last four or five days, all of the couples having giant blow ups, oh. big, big fights. Not with you guys? No, that, uh, no, we've been pretty good. Are you, Great. Are you an optimistic person? Uh, I think mostly, yes. However, I will say, that uh, my uh, my light and my dark, I always try to keep uh, quite balanced. Because because for me, when you meet some people that are you know super super positive, 
I don't trust it. I no, say, exactly. Bell's you book. are maybe a murderer, which I'm going to be honest. This was my concern with you. Nicest guy oh. in Canada, also a murderer. This is probably the safest way then for us to have this date. <laughs> exactly. I cannot exactly. possibly kill you. Why were you asking if I'm an optimist? Um, I was just wondering how you felt this was going. To... Oh, well, many reasons. Um, okay. Now you've been on a lot of dates. Yeah, I've been on a lot of blind dates. All right. Yeah. Mostly so, uh, just the only first ones. Yeah. When you first started your dating life, mm -hmm. did you have um, maybe a supposition, an image of the person that you wanted to be with? And has having all those dates changed that? Ooh, okay. Yeah, actually, if I'm going to be very honest, because I've been uh, doing this blind dating in my life for 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, if you really want the number, it's over 800 different dates. All right, so you've seen things that you may uh, like in a person and may sure. not want in a partner. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, when I was younger, for me, I just thought, uh, maybe I just would like them to be a bit taller than me, uh, have some dark hair, sense of humor. Pretty Aren't short. Good things, yeah. Pretty yeah. short list. Uh, now as I'm older, I'm getting older, and I've met all kinds of great people, uh, I realize, no, I don't actually think, I don't really have a type. Uh, I think that what I'm interested in is um, always still sense of humor. Yes. I, That's I, about I, it. What about you? What do you look for? Wait, uh, is, your wife, is your wife listening and do you have to say everything about her? No, I have no fear. Uh, um, no, she is um, totally fine with... Huh. Um, sense of humor is... Yeah. Oh, it's very sexy. There's nothing, there's no better feeling than laughing. There's oh. nothing better than having someone make you laugh. You you have immediate attraction with them. This is true. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay, you just reminded me. Uh, because of course, uh, our mutual friend, Tony Napo, that was... Uh, uh, that, that's, from watching, that seemed like a very lovely date. He was pretty great. Yeah. yeah. He was great, and I'm very grateful that he set us up. And then, of course, we are saying on the internet to people, oh my gosh, it will be uh, me and Monsieur Colin Mockery. And uh, then there are people who are like, holy shit, Mimi and Colin Mockery. This is going to be fucking hilarious and epic and the greatest. No, we don't have to do that. Okay, great. Because we that is through. a lot of pressure for a first date. And I thought, you know, we should just keep it really dark, somber, serious. Exactly. <laughs> I have a Shakespeare okay. piece I could do later. It's all oh, going to be good. I don't. I actually don't. Oh, that's pretty, that's good because yeah. that would be really creepy. <laughs> it would be very creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Just a couple of Shakespeare's in the back. So, uh, you know, I don't, I, I know, I really, other than knowing that you are very kind and that you are very talented, I don't actually really know anything about you as a person I don't where did you grow up let me tell you okay I was born in a place called Kilmarnock Scotland and when uh, I was six my father had was one of their uh, the rare Scottish people who who didn't really enjoy Scotland he thought it would be better for his family to go elsewhere and he had some friends in Canada so we took the boat yeah. from um, uh, Scotland to Canada to Montreal. And wow. uh, we, for some reason, um, got a place in a totally French neighborhood. We uh, could as you do, lo a lot of Scottish people end up in French. This is going well for you and I already. Yeah. It's bad enough, the English French thing, but mm. French Scottish, there was like the French language, but wow. then there's the Scottish accent that no one could understand. Wow, <laughs> no, no, not when you're speaking English, not any other language. Not even close. Can't even imagine. 
So we um, we were there for a little while, and then uh, there were problems in uh, Quebec in the uh, 70s. Uh, our school was getting a lot of bomb threats. Okay. Uh, you know, Is it be because the French knew that you were a little Scottish boy going to school so. there, and they were like part of it. My well, parents let's... tried to keep it hidden. It was like I was the golden child. Mm -hmm. So we moved mm -hmm. to Edmonton. As you do. Where no one could find us. <laughs> No! Well, oh, where the hopeful people go to die? <laughs> <laughs> no. I, would, I oh. have a lot of friends in Edmonton. Oh my goodness. See, you it's know what? Awesome. I have some friends in Edmonton as well, and it, they are aware that they are living in a shit town. Okay? Um, we're not surprising them. You can be nice. I could do shows in Edmonton, so I'm not going to say oh. anything more about it. Yeah, no. I, I, I have a deep, deep resentment for Edmonton. I can feel that. It just came right Not out really. of your eyes through the screen into my wine. It's only, honestly, it's only because uh, on one side of my family, I have some cousins who live in Calgary mm -hmm. and uh, there is like a rivalry. So, yeah, there I, is. you know, Edmonton knows it. If they it makes you it. feel better, my mother hated Edmonton absolutely despised it and what? okay that's another question we were there for a year oh okay then we moved to vancouver and that's where i mostly grew up um there was you know these little moments in your life where you think wow if that had happened what would have happened to me this sure. is all right so we're in vancouver my father was an airplane mechanic and could not find work and for nine months, he'd get up every morning, go out, hit the streets, look for work, couldn't have. Hit for hit the streets looking for airplane mechanic and, jobs or any anything at all? Just anything at all. Okay, couldn't anything have. at all. So he decided we can't live there. We have to move back to Scotland. So sold everything we had. We were in a motel and it was like a week before we were leaving. And he turned to my mother and said, I can't, I can't go back. We have to give me another month. What? And then two weeks later, he got a job with Air Canada. But then I, th I you know, I often think that moment of, uh, that would have changed my entire, uh, would change our entire family's life. Oh my goodness, yes. Wow, to be okay. I'm curious. How did your mother take it? That we are we sold everything. We're in a motel. We're about to leave. Listen, sweetheart. Um, give me one more month. I think she was fine as long as it wasn't Edmonton. We were in Vancouver, so that was nice. And she had you know friends there, and she did love the country. Wow. So she was willing. And a month really doesn't seem that long. No. And yeah. unless you are locked in your house. Yeah. Then and I'm pretty sure he was lying about a month. He would have stretched it into at least a time year. Is, time is weird. Anyway, so it was you, your mama, your papa. Do and you have siblings? I have a younger brother. Oh. And a younger sister. Oh, you, you had to really think about that. For a I was second. trying to think with my Wait younger sister there at that point. Yes. Oh, was. I see. I see. Yeah. I see. Was she actually in existence? Yes, yes she was. Ah, well. Oh my God, okay. So you are the oldest. I'm the oldest. Me too, I am the eldest in my family. How many are in your family? Uh, okay, depends. <laughs> my papa, <laughs> well, listen. In my little family, there is myself and my little brother. Okay. But uh, my papa, lot of children. Oh. Because, uh, so my mama um, uh, was French. My papa mm. is English. Uh, yeah. That's why they divorced. Uh, but uh, my papa was uh, married before my mother. Then there, and he had some kids. Then there was um, myself, my brother. And then they split. Mm -hmm. Then there was a third wife uh, and some more kids. So, you know. There Do you was... think your dating is in direct uh, response oh. to that getting married all the time? You, you want to make sure? <laughs> Did I just, is this a breakthrough? Oh my God, actually, it might be. What a horrible thing to do in a first date. I'm so no, sorry. What? No, 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 it's great. Listen, life is okay. short. There's a fucking pandemic. Let's go deep. Let's go. 
Continue. Do I think that my dating is in response to your dad getting married? You want to. You don't want to make those mistakes, so you want to make sure you vet out the best partner for you. Okay. It's if I want. Okay. Um, if I, I was going to, if I was going to be honest, and I will be because we're on the date. All right. Um, uh, I would say first of all, when I was growing up, I was not one of these little girls that would dream uh, of my wedding. Never, never had dreams of my wedding. So you know, let actually at quite a young age, I remember someone asking, I was maybe like 14 and I said, no, 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 no. I don't think so. I will have a lot of lovers. <laughs> and maybe like, um, I picture myself with a, a rocking chair, drinking a lot of gin. I think I was like 14 when I came up. That's wow. the, that is true. So maybe, uh, I think uh, I grew up being worried that because of my uh, family history and the divorce, all of this, I was worried somehow maybe I was m missing the skills to make a successful relationship. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I always wanted to be married. You did? Which is not when you, we were dating in the 70s, was not one of your big selling points. So I oh, kept it to myself. No. <laughs> you were dating in the, like it was like the remnants of the 60s, free love, let's disco. Well, and you're like, I really hope to get married. I had the opportunity to date in the 70s. It didn't really happen a lot. I wasn't, uh, this will shock you. I wasn't really a big um, dater. Why I was not? not shy. You were? Yeah. Um, so, I, I, uh, I had a lot of women who were friends. Yes. I was their friend. Oh, you were that guy. I was that guy. Were you the ones that when they were breaking up with assholes, they would call you and-, and Yes, and then I would come over and talk to them. Or we, I'd be the designated date until they found someone better and go um, with them. Wow. I did a- um, dance marathon with Mary Lou Ordorfer. It was 1975. Is that a real name or is that, that an a real name? name? Mary Lou Ordorfer. She wow. wasn't my girlfriend. She was going out with Rolf, uh, someone. But Rolf came <laughs> and said, uh, Mary Lou really wants to do this dance marathon. I don't want any part of it. Could you do it for me? You are describing the plot of like a Michael J. Fox movie. You no, know, I just realized, <laughs> yeah, why am I sharing this? <laughs> Please continue. Listen, well, I went deep about the divorce and the serial dating. Let's hear about Mary right. Lou and the There's dance marathon. There's deep about this. Because we started doing uh, 24 hours in to the dance. In fact, we won a prize for best jive. Oh. Um, that's just a by the way. Um, I, I, I have to give you one, by the way. The jive is actually my favorite dance of oh, all time. It's so, it's it's great because you can you can get close, but you can also oh do that. And you can do the gymnastics. And my yeah. favorite is like the octopus and all of this. Colin just, Mockery, I'm making a pledge to you. We when we are finally, jive? finally allowed to leave our homes, we will shoot a jive video together. <laughs> yes. My jiving's a little slower than it was in the 70s, but I can you, still- go. You and me both. <laughs> <laughs> um, the um, dance marathon lost uh, uh, lost all its backing 24 hours into it. So there was a big prize. It was like a $5,000 prize or something. <laughs> they lost all their wow. money. They only had one tape that played every... Th so every three hours, it would start at the beginning. It had American Pie, yeah. Stairway to Heaven. Wow. And I think Jive Talking. I can't remember that. Those were the ones I remember the most because when I came back to American Pie, it was like, oh, geez, this goes on forever. And just over and over. It just kept going. Then they said, oh, we have no money. Uh, it's over. <laughs> and then okay, Mary I have Lou to check. I'm sorry. Yeah. Are you, you sure check. that it was a, a dance marathon? Because what you are describing with the everybody dance and we play the same tape over and over, this is a form of torture. I but if you were kidnapped, 
If you were kidnapped, this would be how they would make you it talk. Would. I'm not, because it was a time when dance marathons weren't really a thing. It was the had long gone. I don't know why it came back. It's, it was at the Pacific National Exhibition. Wow. Uh, at, at the place where they usually have all the cow shows. So there was a <laughs> bit of a stench in the air. And Mary Lou Ordorfer, around uh, hour 23, we were dancing, it was Stairway to Heaven. So we were mm. dancing and she had fallen asleep. Yeah. So I was trying not to jostle her, but she woke up and thought that I was making a move on her and punched me. Oh! Are you but, serious? Yeah, but I think it was just, um, she's not very good after she wakes up apparently. Wow. So, Mary Lou, I hope you're watching this. I forgive you. I really hope that she is watching and I hope that you get some random thing on the Twitter saying sorry for punching you. I hope so too. I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh at it. I haven't, well, I haven't, I haven't even thought of that story for God knows how long. It's not just, but that was my dating life, taking out other people's. Um, no, listen, listen, that and also, just this little snapshot where I'm imagining that you are being very gentle, trying not to wake her up. That's very sweet, very caring. She wakes up, punches you. I mean, this is, uh, you are describing like um, the archetype of the nice guy. Yeah, they do say it. Well, they do say nice guys finish last, but that isn't true. But look at you now. So I want to know, so you are, you are the nice guy and uh, uh, you, you were the friend. I have a dark side though. Yeah, okay, come on, be serious. There are things, Monsieur Mockery, that piss you off. You are not a, you, this is what I know about the funny people in the world, that uh, you are able to be funny because uh, you, have, uh, you have this depth to you. You can't be funny if you don't have some darkness. Oh, in the, yeah. in a good no, I think you're right. I think you're right. Okay. Oh, you want me to be dark right on you? Well, right on me. I want you to be dark on me. Okay. Um, it's tough over the internet, but. There are, I mean, there are things that um, really make me mad. And I, I, as I think about them, I can't, um, I don't think I can say it without just sounding like an old fogey. Here's what really upsets me. Okay. Lack of manners. Oh my God, me too! <laughs> yes. Rudeness. Mm -hmm. See, I think um, the lessening of manners has really hurt society. When okay. you use manners, you're acknowledging the other person and sort of, I'm thanking you for what you did for me. Thank you so much, or please, I realize um, that you can give this to me or not, and I would, uh -huh. I would really be great if you could. And I, I'm going to let you go first because I'm not in a hurry. And you seem little things like that, and you have you build an empathy. And I feel that once the manners went, the empathy went, and yeah. nothing drives me more insane than people who will just um, not for a second put themselves in another person's place yeah so you are talking about manners and empathy as yeah. well it's i okay i have to i'm going to confess to you that oh. i was a big fan and i loved you before we even said hello tonight oh. but now that i'm knowing about your um, pet peeve of the bad manners love you even more because oh, i i'll you. tell you uh, I have on more than one occasion, I have had conversations with a couple of friends where I said, the bad manners drive me crazy. I want to make a line of t-shirts that on the t-shirts you can get different ones. And they, sing, they say things like, excuse me for interrupting or um, please and thank you. Uh, or, um, oh no, please after you. <laughs> You know, just little polite yes. phrases, and we could sell these T-shirts, and just little reminder of... Um, Gets it in their minds, yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing, it's such a small thing. A small, a thank you is such a small thing. <sighs> Please, it's a... So 
I can feel my shoulders going up. I can see it. I can see it. No, but you're right, because it does not take a, um, a lot of effort on your part, but the tiny drop of good that it puts into the world, that's a big ripple. Yes. And then if you look at the opposite side, for example, you know, I, um, a, a friend of mine, <laughs> I was talking to a friend of mine. She went grocery shopping. Look, we're all under a lot of stress right now. I get it. She was in the lineup outside for the grocery store. People are not social distancing. There was a, I will use the term loosely, gentleman uh, who was getting too close. And she turned and she said, listen, could you please back off a little bit? She said that he went up one side of her, down the other with profanity in this public place. And I think, oh no, what is happening? Yeah. It hurts my heart. It, it, it is hurtful. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, my wife, who's a very gentle person. And uh, let's talk about your wife. All right. Yeah. She is um, just lovely and huh. very um, one of those people who is constantly looking at the other side and seeing. Oh. And we have a daughter who we, we love very much, oh. who is transgender. Uh -huh. And uh, Deb and Kinley were at um, the c &E. Okay. And this woman made a remark about my daughter. Oh, and like a rude remark? Yes, exactly. And my wife um, went insane and because she's a mother who loves her daughter very much and just went insane on her. And, right. uh, and to the point where my daughter actually said, okay, mom, you have to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> and... You are, you have earned, mom, you have earned your P flag designation. Thank you very much. Tone so, it down a little bit. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So um, she thought about it and she said, you know what? That was the wrong thing to do. So she wrote a card that said, you're looking um, at my daughter. She is one of the loveliest people you will ever meet. If you have a question about, um, anything please feel free to ask and we will um respectfully answer and she uh, got like you know 500 of them <laughs> i thought wow you're really expecting trouble um um but she does that kind of thing she constantly thinks you know what i went a little um although justified there may have been another way to deal with that and she's constantly looking for that way wow i know i wish i could do that because i wow. immediately think I would, I always wish I had the superpower to make someone soil themselves. <laughs> so whenever they piss me off, I would just look at them and immediately and would... they would shit themselves. That's amazing. I may, even, I may even follow them to their work and wait till then or- And you'd wait for the perfect moment. Yeah. Like, oh, come, the... come out on stage. We're about to give you an award. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. You know, people talking you... about flying or being invisible. No, 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 no. Making people shit themselves. That's the power. I need to raise my own superpower bar. Honestly, that's actually really great. And I have to say, so, so your wife, she made these cards. And if uh, uh, she and your daughter are out in public, if they are getting sort of weird looks or whispers, mm -hmm. does she now, she distributes these cards? Yeah, but that? of course, since then, there hasn't been any incidents at all. Well. Of course, that is the way the universe works. But, yes. but okay, it's because I'm a, a, a member of my family is also transgendered, and so I have, of course, I have seen you and your wife and your daughter on television talking about all of these things. And honestly, I've always been of the opinion: not first of all, not anybody's business. Secondly, life for. Ever. Life is not easy. Period. Yeah. There's your t-shirt. Life is not easy, followed by here's a bunch please, of reminders you. to please be polite. <laughs> uh, and so whatever feels right for you, if it's it not hurting anyone else, that's your business. But that is 
And it just seems so logical, doesn't it? It's like, how it does. does this affect your life? How, how does, does it? Two people of the same sex being in love and marrying, how does that affect your life? Aside well, from the fact that obviously you're very unhappy for some reason and want to take it out on the world. That's right. And then... And then... Oh my God, I want this superpower next to you. No. Oh. So that's... <laughs> yeah, because I know. What is, what is really great about it, Colin, is um, that it is something that you do from a distance, very gentle. Doesn't uh, hurt anyone. It's not really hurting anyone. But it is delivering a tiny lesson. Yes. <laughs> Listen, if I can move mountains and make some magic in the world, if I could ever make a way for you to have this superpower. I would love for you to do that. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I will do this for you. All no right. problem. No, you're a very, uh, you're a very giving person. I try That's to be. Very... I try to be. What's your darkness? What is it? Well, um, I would say uh, for a long time when I was young, I would have fantasies about being a police officer because I really wanted to apprehend bad guys. <laughs> like, but in like a far too aggressive a way for me to oh. actually become a police officer. I see, more like a dirty hairy kind of Yeah, thing. I think it wouldn't go well. Uh, but it's, the, it's out of um, a good impulse to rid the streets of crime. It's true. So, but this is this is a bit. I'll be a deep dive on the on the honesty. Um, I'm also a bit of a hypocrite. Okay. So on the one side of me, I want to apprehend people for breaking the law and the rules. At the very same time, if someone puts too much rules on me, I need to break them. Yeah. Well, there's different, but there's different, there's like society's rules. I mean, there's yeah. the rules where you don't hurt people or take people's stuff. Yeah. Okay. That's, that is, yeah, you're right. We don't but do this. Rules. But yeah, the rules where, no, you wear this or you don't go here. You don't talk to this person. Those rules are meant to be broken. Ah, oh, okay, great. Good. Then we can sort of like stir the shit together a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Politely, yeah, yeah, we say please and thank you before we break our rules. Of course. It's the only way to learn. It's so true. It's so true. Okay, so, I mean, um, how, how is it for you? How is your pandemic? I mean, it's tough, it's tough uh, I think, for the entire world to be on a date right now and not sort yeah. of say, how's it going? It is. You were talking earlier about time, how weird it is. Time is weird. And it's weird because I thought I was thinking the other day, it's like I'm 62. You are not. I know it's shocking. Believe me, it's shocking to me. Okay, okay. I have a follow-up question after, right. but continue. But I was thinking, I it feels like yesterday I was doing my first improv show. And oh. today I'm in the vulnerable group of a pandemic. <laughs> Where did that time go? And why did it end up like this? Yeah, right. But um, it's been good in some ways because I, I was insanely busy up until things got crazy. So mm -hmm. um, I was doing two tours, one with my regular guy, Brad Sherwood, one with the hypnotist and one uh, I was shooting a movie in Utah. So when I came home, it was nice just to see Devin Kinley again and sort of relax and get back into that. I sure i'm going to get antsy fairly soon because i do enjoy working but this is yeah. i've been doing a lot of uh, stuff like this not with anyone's charming by the way okay great great i'm glad you put this caveat on no, this it has been, this has been absolutely I, and as i said i'm horrible at dates but this has just been lovely you're very uh, you put your partner at ease and it's just been a lovely time. Well, if I can offer my very professional assessment of your dating skills, they're pretty great. Oh, thank, pretty you. Sharp. thank you very much. Yeah, so thank you're you. doing okay. But you are used to being busy. So it is I nice know. to have a bit of downtime, but the antsiness will come. Yeah, and I feel I should be doing more. Oh my God, I am the same. I love to be busy. I love all the things that I do. Suddenly, oh, it, it's a dead stop. It is like, 
it's like I'm being forced to meditate. I don't want to meditate. I don't want to do any of this. I, <laughs> And in some way, you can do anything you want, really, within the co you could you could write, you could uh, catch movies, catch up on books you haven't been. It's too much. It's too much freedom. It's too I much know. freedom. There's so much freedom that all I can do is wake up whenever I feel like it, look out the window and think, oh, what will I do? That's terrible. That's actually very pri privileged of me to be able to say this. I know it, but um, uh, uh, the problem for me is I am realizing I keep myself very busy so that I don't have to fully look at myself. Um. Now all of the distractions are gone and now I am trying desperately if I can to not put my head up my own asshole like way up there way up there really looking around it's not good up there well it really is exactly you, um you just focus on the negative things about you do you no. celebrate the great things about you ah okay so why does that make you feel oh <laughs> and uh, believe me i'm not yeah someone who uh gets excited about myself but you know there are times you think oh you know what i'm pretty good at that or that's a good thing that i do what? and there are horrible things that we that's the stuff we work on this is what we do this is how we are uh, the human beings in 360 degrees but i realize in my own work i'm guessing you might be similar but you tell me okay i love to go out on the stage live or even if it is in a different capacity it doesn't matter live not live but i love to make people laugh and the reason i do it is uh, again coming back to what we said earlier life is difficult if i can take you away for one hour uh, for me i am in service to my community i like to serve i like to serve mm -hmm um maybe when i was much younger for me to perform was uh, to do with like i want them to love me i want a little bit of accolades and uh, i want sure. i want this feeling but as i get older i realize wait a second the reason i love to do it is to bring a tiny bit of joy when i can absolutely because, you know, I, I don't know how it is in your world of improvisation, but in the clown world, we are always trying to um, uh, be... Can you imagine that world? It must be insane. It's not. I mean, I, I use that. I don't even like to say clown. Believe me, there's a lot of baggage comes with that world. Um, uh, yeah. But in the clown world, we are always trying to, to begin, sit in a place of what we call clown neutral. Do you know this phrase? Mm -hmm. It means all of your pain and all of your joy in perfect balance. Oh. Yeah. So that that, well, it's so we are never denying that to be a human being is all of it, all of it, all of it. So lately I have been thinking, if you will indulge me, at the know. moment in the on the balance of the world, there is a big pain, very big pain, big. The scales went like this with what and so how do we try to have it come in perfect balance and i've been realizing when the weight on the on the negative is very 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 big the way to move the scale is you have to put tiny 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 joys moment by moment day by day you it it is almost if you think to yourself what is the joy that is one joy that is big enough to bring balance you your brain goes blank, it's too big. But if there is the pandemic, if I put tiny joys, it will over time do this. That's where my head is lately. That is excellent. And you know, we've had a bit of a theme tonight. About what is our theme? These little things, huh. like little thank yous, little pleases, yes. the ripple effect. Same with these little moments of joy. It's so true. It's just, that's the part I think that's the most irritating is it is fairly simple. It's a little thing that just builds and just 
let it wave over you and build upon it. And yeah, I know. I'm with you. Oh my yeah. God. Okay. If I was with you in person right now, I would like jump on you and try to kiss you. No, um, that would not be actually, that's not acceptable. I would ask first. I would say to oh, you, that's, Monsieur, that's I'm thinking about jumping on you and kissing you, but I would like to get your permission first. Oh, sure. Well, then, of course, I could say yes, of course. Oh, that's really sweet. <laughs> hmm. So I wish I could do this with you for the entire evening. But we well, can't. Oh, time's up. Well, no, it's not that time is up, but uh, you know, I, it's, I'm only a little bit, I would say, self conscious because a few people were messaging me after my date last night, uh, no, last week, and saying, like, you know, on the internet, um, people really like things to happen quickly, and you guys talk for a long time. <laughs> but you know what? This makes me actually worried about humanity. I think we should have a date marathon where we, for, just like Mary Lou or Dorfer, we go for 24 hours. <laughs> we play American Pie over and over again. Make, oh my God. Stretch people's attention span. Well, yeah, you know what? You should be careful. You know that I, I, just like you, I am trained to say yes. And you say, oh, we should do 24 hours of dating. I say, listen. Yes. We literally have the time to do that right now. I can circle back around where we say, listen, it's a Mimi and Colin 24 hour dating marathon. Who knows what shit we will get oh up to. Oh my God. Be careful. Yeah. I thought we were just the right amount of funny too. I, I mean, it's very difficult for me to tell. You made me laugh several times. You made me laugh. You're very charming. Well, you know that. You, oh, you, you are know. charming. You know it. You know it. Oh my I God. I think we both know it. We, okay. Yeah. I mean, let's admit it just since it's the two of us who are pretty charming. Um, okay. So I don't know. Did you see it when I was dating Monsieur Napo last week? Yeah, I did watch it. Again, this, very charming, well, lovely day. Yeah. So you know that we by accident came on this idea of since we are in the middle of a pandemic and we made a little game of how far can can Mimi go up the ladder. Are you open to setting me up with someone? Absolutely. You I are? Mean, oh yes, absolutely. I think, um, you know, you're lovely and you're, um, you're a gift to share with the world. And I oh, think- Oh my God. Don't you think, don't you think the more men who dated you, I think it would be better for, uh, uh, womankind in, in general? Well, I, you know, I will say two things to this. Number one, uh, if the gentleman is single, for example, Monsieur Napo last week, um, it's very nice for me to take him on a test drive. Yeah. And uh, uh, I know actually because Tony has messaged me to say that he has actually had a couple of emails, messages on the social media from ladies who said, wow, I saw your date. Oh. And I say, you are welcome, monsieur. See? But the other thing I will say, because I have been going on these blind dates for a very long time, here is the one surprise for me that I did not know was coming. In my mind, I thought, I'm making a little show where we fuck around, there are some laughs, whatever, you know. Um, I did not expect that what I would learn, I would learn as the person on the inside is to really love and have a lot of empathy for gentlemen, for men. Because uh, when I have been live and it is not a performer and they come up on stage, I see these gentlemen who are really, they really want to help me and they want to do it well and they want to be perceived really well and under the table their hands are trembling and yet they are not socially in a place where they can say wow i'm so nervous right now so it actually made me realize wow there's a lot of pressure in the world on gentlemen to have their shit together yeah but it's also nice that I mean, everything that stops us from doing what we want to do or be with who we want to be with is, is fear. And yeah. you can work your way through that. It's just having faith, faith in yourself and faith in your partner. And 
it's not always going to work out true but if you don't do anything you'll just be left wondering about the what could have happened oh you are you son of a bitch you actually are the nicest man in canada you just proved it no I, oh I, I, oh I, no I, wouldn't that be horrible if i actually did and that's this is how i end the date now that is how we end that day. everything was really great i'm so in love with colin mockery and then he made me so wow no that was a, i take it back that's okay. i know you do i knew you were just joking i was playing with you okay so do you have someone in your mind that you would set me up with do you need to think about it what i'm thinking <laughs> okay i was thinking i thought why don't you just go straight to brad pitt but then i thought no wait do you know brad pitt who doesn't i, do, I don't want to make it easy <laughs> no wait I, a second are you saying could you actually okay oh my god you know I, I may pitt. have like maybe five no i have no connection to uh brad you pitt. know what be careful because people on the internet will now go on the imdb and they will do the six degrees of separation and then i will get messages that say actually if colin mockery introduced you to this guy this guy this guy you would be at brad pitt in like two moves i bet you yeah, uh, i think it's like 13 13 moves okay we'll see but um, I do know a lovely guy oh, great. who um, is known internationally. Holy shit. He's, uh, is it, who do you think it is? Is it Obama? <laughs> yes, it is Obama. Oh. No, no, it's not. You Oprah. just actually used your superpower on me, <laughs> and I did shit myself right now. No, uh, no, it's okay and because he's. I'm just saying, Brad Pitt is on my list. Obama is on my list. Doesn't have to be an actor. And uh, uh, David Suzuki, right? Oh my God, I love the scientist. He was. He, yeah, he's lovely. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's none of those guys. That's okay. Uh, uh, Andrew Fung. It's a lovely man I improvised with in Edmonton a few years. Just, um, it was the same week he found out he was going to do a little show called Kim's Convenience. I know this show. Yes, and it's very popular. It's a great You know what, show. I will admit, though, I've actually never seen the TV show. I saw the live stage performance oh. of it. Uh, and then I've seen some clips, so it's great. I, this guy, Andrew Fung. Yeah. And he may have a, a direct connection to Hollywood, a, a bigger connection than I have. Really? Yeah. Okay, I'm in. So, I mean, uh, will you do so? So, Tony put it on the on the Twitter, like. Uh, yeah, I'll tweet. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Oh, I, I actually am learning uh, now. I had a nice time with Tony Napo, and then a great time with you. That. Um, Maybe uh, maybe actors are real people after all. <laughs> maybe. You know, let's not go nuts. I, I think you've done let's, quite well. Let's I, not go crazy. I yeah. mean, yeah. It's like, you know, it's like any other uh, occupation, but sometimes more so. Yeah, sure. Uh, wow. I, I, what is great about the time we have spent together is that I came to the date with a crush on you and I'm leaving with an even bigger crush on you. Oh, that's lovely. This has been so, so nice. It's been this lovely o oasis in this middle of a turbulent um, shitstorm. So it's oh my God. been lovely. This is my only, uh, this is the only thing I'm focusing on right now is how can we give, uh, because that's, I feel like, how do I contribute to the world by giving a little tiny piece of joy, little oasis, a couple of laughs here and there, and we. Yep, I hope we had a little joy, a few little joys tonight to bring this up. Me too. Ah, uh, I just adore you. Oh. Will you please uh, have the greatest week? You too. And uh, give my love to your family, I please. Shall. And I look forward to you setting me up on a date with uh, Monsieur Fang. I do. And if you see someone along the street who looks like a bit of an asshole walking in a funny way, think of me. Oh, for the rest of my life, I will think this. Oh, shit. One thing I'm also supposed to say because I'm terrible at the technical stuff. Maybe you can help me encourage oh. people. 
this I should be doing at the beginning. Who was sticking through to 60 minutes of internet time? Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Apparently it means something in yeah. the world. I don't it know. Sure does mean so it's part of the joy making. Okay. <laughs> Uh, if I was there, I would get your permission to give you a kiss on the lips. I give you one right back. Okay. You are a joy. So are you. Have a great evening. Enjoy the rest of your wine. I hope to speak with you soon. Absolutely. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye.